Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be in the Lord's house with you today. It's good to be back. I am grateful for uh, Ann Worley uh, filling in for the devotion for 8 o'clock service last week and Reverend Jerry Baum who filled in at 1015 and he's off at another church preaching today and I greatly appreciate those that help to care for the congregation when I'm away. Uh, it is good to be back. I started my uh, clinical uh, pastoral education program again on Tuesday, and so uh, enjoying that time, uh, the ability to visit with people in the hospital and to, to care for those at end-of-life situations as well as I uh, have the clinical studies to learn a little bit more to help me be more effective at what I do as we reach people. We're all in a process of learning and growing and, and pushing forward and keeping our eyes fixed on the Lord as we uh, strive to live out the plan that God has worked out for us even before the creation of the world. Anyway, good to be back with you today. Uh, a few announcements as we begin. Uh, it's hard to believe we're going to be entering uh, 2022 before we know it. Uh, probably next week we'll have updates for the directory. Uh, if you have any changes or additions that you need for the directory, uh, you can fill those sheets out next week. For those of you that need to have calendar items in the calendar for the directory, there are blank calendars on the piano. Please obtain a copy and get that filled out and get it back to Rosalie so we have updated calendar information for the upcoming year. Um, so I certainly appreciate that. In your bulletin today also, you will find... Uh, the parents page from the CPYU parents page. It's a great information for parents and grandparents to kind of understand all that our children and youth are, are dealing with today. So be sure to read through that. Uh, a lot of good information. Uh, next week, we will be in, inviting um, Phil and Sandy Lenhart into membership. So I'm excited about that. The following week is our rally day. Uh, now make sure you make note of that, that on the 24th, uh, there is only going to be one service, and that's at 9 o'clock in the morning. So no Sunday school that week, just one service. We are going to have Piercing Word with us that Sunday, and they are going to present uh, the drama on the one story, one God, one plan, one story. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about this. So uh, you want to invite family and friends and neighbors to come out to hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ as found throughout the Bible. And uh, I'm, I'm praying that we'll have a marvelous rally day. Uh, be sure to uh, mark your calendars that you, it starts at 9, so you're not too early or too late for that day, and uh, be sure to invite family and friends uh, that they might join us. Um, this uh, Monday evening, there is going to be a trustee meeting at 7 p.m. I believe Jeff is going to have that via Zoom. Uh, he'll be in touch with you on that. Uh, we have our food ministry this coming Saturday, so they begin uh, work on packing food Wednesday through uh, Friday, and so uh, they can always use a, a helping hand. Um, this uh, Thursday at 7 p.m., we are uh, continuing our study in the book of Revelation. We are in chapter 12. And so if you're able to join us uh, and you'd like a link to that, let me know. Uh, this Saturday at 7 p.m. is the Moton Halloween Parade. I know they didn't have it last year because of the pandemic. It's always well received. Um, see, the altar flowers are presented to the glory of God by Robin Lash in honor of Jim's birthday today. Happy birthday, Jim, and uh, in honor of their 33rd wedding anniversary on the 29th. So a busy month. Uh, the bulletin is presented to the glory of God in memory of Malcolm Tex Cronrath by his wife Ruth and family. And uh, Ruth is still recovering from a fall that she had a, a couple of months back. Uh, our usher today is Glenn Worley. And uh, as I said, our fall rally day is on the 24th at 9 a.m. Uh, there's information on pantry needs in the bulletin. Uh, Kingdom extension offering is going to be taken during October. There are special envelopes for that. And the uh, mission committee will meet on Sunday, October 24th, immediate, immediately after the rally day service. Um, Operation Christmas Child, I'm reminded with each uh, uh, cool air of, uh, of fall weather that uh, we are going to be marching into Advent very soon. We do the Operation Christmas Child Christmas boxes every year, so more information will be coming out on that shortly. Uh, November uh, newsletter deadline is Sunday, October 17th. With that, um, that's all I have by way of announcements. We have our uh, preparation for worship and our call to worship.
from uh, Doug Sewell. Our preparation for worship comes from Psalm 90, verses 12 through 17. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Our call to worship today is the Apostles' Creed. It's found on the front cover page of uh, the hymnal. Please join me in, in affirming what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, that he descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy General Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we uh, come together this morning. We ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon our presence, that we might indeed feel your presence among us. We pray that you would just remove any distractions or anything that would hinder us from worshiping you in spirit and truth this day. So shower us in your care as only you can, reviving body, mind, and spirit. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is hymn number 433, Rise Up, O Church of God, 433. Rise up, O Church of God, have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O Church of God, His kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Rise up, O sons of God, the church for you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her test, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod, as followers of the Son of God, rise up, O Church of God. Amen. You may be seated. We are, are grateful uh, for everyone who gives time, talent, and treasure from the least to the greatest. We uh, thank God for all that he provides for his church universal and for the church here at Zion. Uh, we are about halfway uh, to meeting our uh, needs for our capital campaign to replace the roof on our Christian education uh, building. Uh, hopefully the rally day will help to boost that number a little bit. Continue to be in prayer about that and how you, you might give towards that effort as we... Uh, Strive to get that done uh, sooner than later. We don't want to wait for a rainy day, so to speak, to have to, to do that. Uh, it's the original roof, I believe, that they put on in night. No, it's not the original one. In the early 80s, okay. So we're still 
uh, 40 years old or so, so it's uh, in time to, to get it done. So be in prayer about that. I know that God will meet all of our needs. And just thank you, everyone, who, who gives to the ministries here at Zion and allow us to do the things that we do as we continue to reach the community for Christ Jesus to reach men and women, boys and girls, uh, that they might know Jesus as their Savior and Lord, to grow in knowledge, faith, and love. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Uh, we thank you for the faithful among us, and uh, we thank you for each and every person who gives time, talent, and treasure that your kingdom might grow. Help us, Father, as a church to, to enlarge our vision, uh, to find our purpose, and for each of us, uh, from the youngest to the oldest and everyone in between, may we come together with combined uh, gifts and graces uh, to do your work here on earth. And so bless us, guide and protect for these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, Amen. You may be seated. Our uh, praise hymn today is uh, found in your hymnal, uh, page 414, O Word of God Incarnate, 414. Received word that there was a uh, fire in a Shillington home last night, and uh, one person died in that fire. We want to, to keep this family in prayer for God's uh, comfort and healing and provision during this difficult time. 
Um, Joan uh, Croson was here with us this morning uh, for a little bit. Uh, her surgery on her wrist went well. She's still in a little bit of pain. She says it's about a two or three level. And so you need to continue to keep Joan in prayer as she uh, convalesces and has rehab. Uh, Emily Worley is back home and, and making some uh, progress and uh, still uh, on medicine. We need to keep uh, Emily in continued prayer. Larry and Linda Wolfgang, ongoing needs. Uh, Bob and Dolly Paul as well. Mark Paul uh, had a, a test on Friday and uh, received good news. And so we uh, thank God for answered prayer and uh, for Doug and Joanne Young and just everybody on our list. It's really just the starting point. I recommend that you, you keep that with your Bibles as you do your morning devotions and prayers. You remember uh, those in need. And truly, each and every one of us are in need of, of, of prayer for God's healing touch upon our lives. And so... Uh, with that, let us pray. Father God, we uh, come together today. Uh, we are a sinful, needy, and oftentimes stubborn people. We pray, Father, that you would uh, help us, as uh, John the Baptist said, that we must decrease, and he, Christ Jesus, must increase in our lives, that we could empty out more of self and put more of him into our lives, that we might truly be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Give us those Christ-like attributes of love and joy and peace and so forth. We uh, pray, Father, that your hand of healing, blessing, and provision would be upon each and every one of us, those that are present, those that are joining us by stream, and those that are connected in spirit. We uh, pray, Father, for this family that lost a loved one in this fire last night in Shillington. Be with them, Father. Be with them in their time of mourning that they might find comfort and strength in your presence. We Pray, Father, that you would give them all that they need during this time, uh, just the physical and material needs that they have, and that, that you would supply all of those needs. And we uh, pray, Father, for those on our prayer list, those that are upon our hearts and our minds. We pray, Father, for those that are in uh, hospital and nursing care. We uh, I think of uh, Ken and Evelyn Reed and, and Stosh Redkay. We uh, pray for our shut-ins, Scott Hewitt and Miriam Kern and Joyce Organtini. We Pray for our missionaries and the missions that we support throughout the world, that you would bless and protect and provide them. We pray, Father, for our world, our nation, our military, your church, universal, and the ministries here at Zion. We uh, pray, Father, that you would help us as we move forward in faith to, to be all that you call us to be in Christ. Help us to, uh, to just uh, put more of you into our lives, that we might find all that is ours in Christ. I convinced that there are so many unanswered uh, prayers, things that we never pray for that you long for us to have, Father. Help us to find spiritual discipline in our lives, to be faithful in worship, uh, to be faithful in the study and application of your holy word, uh, to be faithful in, in radiating the love and grace of Christ Jesus in this sinful, wicked world in which we live. Our Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Well, our... Uh, message today uh, is uh, centered on words to live by. And I, I had the, the message at the 8 o'clock service, and then I was talking with the children this morning, you know, and I said, what do, you, what do you, you call something with a lot of words in it? And I wanted to get one of them to tell me a book, and, and then we were able to talk about different books that they like. And then I said, well, you know, there, there's a book that has Bible, or it has God's Word in it. What do you call that? And they were able to tell me that it was the Bible. And so, you know, the Bible truly is uh, a light unto our path, a, a lamp unto our feet. I'm very grateful to have had a, uh, a believing grandmother, uh, Nana, who, who loved the Word of God, loved the Lord, and uh, taught me at an early age to, to read and to memorize and to, to meditate upon the Word of God. I can remember the, the summer that we spent um, just memorizing the 23rd Psalm, which is very, very special to me uh, this day. But, you know, God has a word for us to live by each and every day. No matter what we're facing in life, there's a word for us. The, the Bible is kind of like a mirror that we 
hold up and we can see our true reflection of who we really are. And uh, the, 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 the value of, of knowing uh, God's will for our lives is paramount for those who profess Christ Jesus. There are, are many that would rather not read it uh, than feel if they, they read, then they must begin to apply uh, and they don't want to take an honest look at themselves. And so we're going to look at that today uh, from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Uh, before I begin, let me pray with you. Father God, I pray that as we uh, read your word this morning, that you will just illuminate it to the point that we have a greater understanding of all that is ours in Christ and the depth of his sacrifice for us that we might have forgiveness of sin and the assurance of eternity with you one day. And so, Father, speak to us, body, mind, and spirit, that we would be equipped and willing uh, to do your will in the, in the world. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, the, the message, as I say, it centers on the word of God today, you know, as we, we look at that. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's just as true today as it was when it was first proclaimed verbally and, and people hear it. it. It is truly a living document. It's not something that you, you read it and you're done with it and you put it on the shelf and, and, and that's it. It's amazing that passages of scripture that I read in 1965 are just as vibrant and just as, as, as informing and enlightening today as they were back then. And it's amazing how one passage of Scripture can touch our lives in many different ways. You know, depending on what we're going through, we, we allow God to speak to us uh, through his word. And so a question I have for you is, are you at peace with God? And uh, as we, we look at this passage in Hebrews 4, we need to understand uh, earlier on in the, the chapter, the, the writer, uh, obviously, is God writing through men, is talking about entering into God's rest and the realization that so many people are unable to enter into this rest. Uh, we, we go back to the, the wilderness journey with the nation of Israel, and we see that a whole generation of people had to die off before Joshua and Caleb could go into the promised land, which was an earthly land, because of their sin. And, and so the, the word of God truly is our guide and our direction for life, that we could live a life that's pleasing to God. But we can find God's perfect rest now, and obviously into eternity one day, because we can have that peace of God which transcends all understanding when we get serious with God, you know, when we spend time uh, faithfully reading the Word and studying it and applying it, uh, faithful in prayer, faithful in worship. Uh, there are people out there that actually read their Bibles every day. Uh, you know, I know a few myself. And, um, you know, something that we should be doing, it should be part of our religious practice that we read uh, a portion of scripture every day. I, I believe we should have a systematic uh, way of reading through the Bible, whether you do that in a year or two years or three years or 10 years, however long it takes you, but have a plan in place and begin to get into the word every day. Let the word get into you and, uh, you know, connect that with prayer. And this is a way that we uh, allow God's still small voice to speak to us. Uh, that we can hear very clearly what God is saying to us. As I said, the, the, this, the Bible, the, the Word of God is like a mirror that we hold up to ourselves and we see who we truly are. Not, not the person that we want to project, but the person that God sees, the person deep down that who we, we really are. And so are you, are you at peace with God? Uh, and we know that living uh, for Jesus brings true peace and harmony in our lives, and it's not something that you can get by osmosis. It's not something that you can get an hour a week. It's something that has to become a daily practice. You know, God desires to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us, and, and these relationships take time, and, and they take effort, and, and, and it's an act of love both ways. God loves us so much that he sent his son into this sinful world that we might know the depth of his love for us. And in his love for us, he desires that we know him through his son. And this is where that relationship uh, uh, begins at the moment that we receive him as Savior and Lord. Um, we talk about this being a, uh, a matter of faith. You know, that we, we believe in a God that we can't physically see with our eyes. 
but we believe in a God that we can see, nonetheless, a God that is revealing himself. He reveals himself to our, our body, our mind, and our spirit, and through this thing that we call natural revelation, the world around us, we can see God. And I'm convinced that God reveals himself not just in sight. You know, I, I can look at a, a rainbow or sunrise or a sunset, or I, I can hear the, the waves crashing at the, the beach. You know, I, I can smell the salt in the air. I can look at a beautiful moon or you know, just a flower or just the, the leaves that are changing. And I, that's God. God is working and God is speaking. And, and, and are we taking advantage of these God's things you know, every day to realize that we live in a world that belongs to God, that's created by God? And, and so by far the greatest way to connect is to get into the word. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 11 talks about faith. He says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Physicalized, but with spiritual eyes, we do in fact see. One day we will see with physical eyes. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, Right now we look through the glass darkly, but one day we will see clearly as we're clearly seen by God, even now. Um, Grant, I'm going to move to the pulpit microphone. Paul says in Romans 10 17, he says, So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. And, and so when we've heard the word of God, and really the beginning from Genesis to Revelation, everything in between is a love story from God. When we hear about God and about the good news of Christ Jesus, our faith is increased. It's that small act of faith that receives him as Savior and Lord of our lives, no matter how old we are, and with the realization that we are sinners and that we are in need of a holy God, that through the shed blood of his Son, washes away our sin, and in that we have a relationship with a holy God that loves us and gave his son. So let's take a look at this passage. It's Hebrews 4, verses 12 through 16. It's probably familiar to most of you. It says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we did, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And uh, I'm so grateful that we can find that grace to help us when we, we need it most. I'm so grateful that this word of God, this Bible that we've been given, I have a bunch of them on myself. I've got them in various translations I'm a Bible collector at this stage of the game, but it's, it's so comforting to know that everything that I deal with in life, all the challenges, all the difficulties, all the heartaches, that God has a word for me here, and, and that I can study this, and I can apply it, I can find comfort. The, the word truly is alive, and, and it's powerful. And it's what the writer says, for the word of God is alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It cuts between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. We're not talking about this big, dull sword, maybe, but maybe a smaller sword that is sharp on both sides, super sharp. Uh, probably the closest thing that comes to mind to us would be the surgeon's scalpel, which can cut finely and precisely. And if we think about God's word, as living. It's living because it's life-changing. It made all the difference to me when I first realized that there's a Savior and I need a Savior because I'm a sinner. And without a Savior to take away my sin and to allow me the right to be a child of God, that I would be separated from a holy God for all eternity because he's holy. He wants us to be holy. And we can only accomplish that through his Son. 
We can't do it on our own effort. So it is alive because it brings life to those that are spiritually dead. It's powerful and it's sharper. It's sharper than the, the sharpest two-edged sword. It cuts between soul and spirit. You know, the, the word of God, it reveals who we are. It tells us the truth about who we are. It tells us who we're not. You know, we're, we're pretty good in putting a facade on and, and, and showing the world what we want them to see. But God looks beyond the surface and, and he looks at the heart and he looks at us intimately and he knows us as creator and sustainer. And, and so he can penetrate to the core of our moral and spiritual life. He can see where we're making progress and he can see where we fall woefully short. And the word of God, like I said, it's like a mirror. It shows you who you are, both good and evil. You know, it's so easy when we compare ourselves to other people to, to have this false sense of superiority. Well, I'm better than that person. Look at them. Look at what they do. And the truth of the matter is at the cross of Jesus, we're all in an equal playing field. None greater, none less all saved in Christ Jesus, at least those that are willing to receive him as their savior. And so this word, it, it penetrates our hard exterior surface and uh, it, it demands an answer. You can't read the word of God without saying, God, you're, you're speaking to me here. It demands an answer on what we're going to do or what we're not going to do. I think some people don't want to read the word of God today because they don't want to be held accountable. At least they think that they're not going to be held accountable. They don't want to have to do what God says. They'd rather be the God of their own lives. They'd rather live any way that they want to live and, and, and live in a false sense of illusion that, that somehow God's okay with that. That there's no responsibility whatsoever on our part. You know, we as uh, believers in Christ Jesus, we are to allow the, we must allow the word of God to shape us, to, to mold us, and to continue to challenge us to live lives to be a reflection of the love and grace of, of Jesus. Well, I'm convinced that's what the world needs to see now, more of Christ's likeness in people that profess him as their Savior and Lord. You know, there's so many angry and frustrated people out there today and so many people that are lost without a clue and they're looking for answers and they just don't know where to look. So many people that, that think harshly of the church today because they, they've seen how we behave at times. And so we really need to be like John the Baptist and empty out self and put more of Christ where we decrease and where people see more and more of Christ's likeness in us. We're filled with that fruit of the Spirit, those wonderful attributes of God. You know, God intimately knows us. And here's the thing that's amazing. He loves us despite it. You know, if you read in the first two chapters of Genesis, God created a perfect world. If you look in the last two chapters of Revelation, the world is perfect again. Everything else in between is laden with sin because we have willingly entered into sin. We are the byproducts of sin in a, a sinful, fallen world. And, and God, even before the creation of this perfect world, he knew us and he loved us despite who we are. And he loved us so much that he sent his son uh, to come into this sinful, dark world to be our savior. Paul writes in uh, Romans 8, verses 31 to 39, he says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who will then condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand. He's pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? 
As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, we, we rest in the finished work of Christ Jesus at the cross of Calvary where his blood was shed, his body was broken, he died, he was buried, he rose again, and he ascended to the right hand of the throne of God where even now he's interceding on our behalf. You know, we have so many things in life that push our buttons, don't we? we? We have things that make us angry and anxious and fearful and frustrated. And, and the, the word of God has an assurance for all of that that we, we don't have to worry. You know, if God is for us, who could possibly be against us? Not even death can separate us from the love of God. We need to get into the word and let the word get into us. We need to empty out self, you know, and we need to put Christ in. And we need to find that healing and hope that is ours in Christ alone. And, and so God's word is indeed it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And like I said, what comes to mind is this surgeon's scalpel where they can do their amazing work. You know, God's word, it cuts between soul and spirit. You know, as I do my clinical studies, I started on Tuesday, I put a pager on my uh, belt and it went off two minutes later with uh, a trauma where a lady was involved in a head-on collision where she came in and she had a, a broken femur, which is the strongest bone in the body. It takes a lot of pressure to break that. Football players break these bones and car accidents are notorious for breaking femurs. She had a broken femur, she had a, a broken wrist, uh, her knee was busted up, she was banged up. Her uh, dash caved in a foot. They had to cut her out of her vehicle. It took about 40 minutes to get her out of the vehicle. She was intensely in pain. And in the trauma bay, there were surgeons. There were people involved in what the next procedure was going to be. Once they got her through her MRI and said these are the extent of her injuries, and they were ready to do what most people aren't able to do, and that is with fine precision, uh, bring healing to the physical body. And as we think about our physical bodies and, and that God's word you know, has a way of, of cutting through that which uh, most people aren't able to see. You know, it, it's uh, able to uh, cut through, uh, you know, it uses the metaphor of soul and spirit. Are you, are you realize that soul and spirit are two different things? Uh, oftentimes we just kind of lump them in together. But we have a spiritual side of us that allows us to connect with the spirit of God. Uh, and so that's how we have this relationship. Our spirit unites with the spirit of God. But we all have a soul, an essence of who we are. And that soul is eternal. It will live forever. Uh, it'll either live forever with God in eternal bliss or it'll live eternally separated from God because of people that have refused the, the finished work of Christ Jesus. And so uh, God can see into the innermost part of us and he can see who we are and how we live. And so the soul is the essence of humanity's being. It's where we are. Even when this physical body dies, our soul lives on. The soul is immortal and it will live for all eternity. The spirit is that immaterial part of humanity that connects with God. God is spirit and so we must worship him in spirit and in truth. One day, though, we're told in Scripture that we'll open our eyes and we'll see our Savior face to face. So this is a metaphor of God's Word. It's cutting between joint and marrow. And, and we know the joints that connect the bones, the outer surface of the bone is extremely strong. And inside the, the middle of that bone is the marrow. That is where the uh, red blood cells are produced and some white blood cells. And that it, it would take a precision for a surgeon to kind of cut through the bone and through the marrow and through the joints. And God can get to the, the smallest, most intimate part of who we are. And with his word, he can describe to us. 
uh, who we are. The, the word of God, it, it separates, if you will, truth from lies. It separates light from dark, right from wrong, and good from bad. The, the word of God exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. You know, if you get honest with God and, and you allow the word of God to speak to you, you're going you're to find out some things about yourself. You're going to find out where you, you need to be and what you need to do. Writer says in 13, he says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. You know, we're really good, uh, I, I think, at fooling people sometimes. You know, we put on that outward exterior, have a smile on our face, and we might be hurting deeply inside, and, and yet we put that mask on that we, we want the world to see, and oftentimes it's not a true reflection of who we really are, what's really going on inside here. Um, but God's word is nothing that's hidden from him. He, he knows our thoughts. He knows what we're going to say before we say it. He, he knows our actions before we even do them. Before the creation of the world, he knew us perfectly. And yet he loved us so much, he sent his son. And you know, nothing surprises God. I, as I, I said this morning at 8 o'clock service, I said, God never... Uh, says, gee, I didn't think Bob would do that, and I actually had another Bob in the 8 o'clock service, so I'd say I'm talking about myself. And, and, and the reality is that nothing surprises God. There isn't anything that we could ever hide from God. We're not going to fool God. You know, one day we're going to give an account. And, and there's no lies. There's no deception. There's the reality of who we truly are before a holy God to whom we are accountable and we'll give an account one day. Paul says in Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11, Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And one day, we're going to give this account. Here's the thing, for those of you that are in Christ, here's some good news, friends. You're going to come before a throne of grace because you've been forgiven through the shed blood of Jesus. Some come before a throne of judgment one day, the mercy seat of Christ. John says in 1 John chapter 1, 8 through 10, he says, if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and we're not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we're calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. And so many people claim today that they have no sin. Uh, as a matter of fact, in this country and beyond, we're trying really hard to, to just push sin out of the peripheral view of society to... Uh, legislate everything that is wrong. You know, we, we live in that day and age where men call evil good and good evil, and God help us, you know, because people uh, are able to uh, rationalize that they can live any way that they want to live and that God's okay with that. Or, or that we don't have to read the word of God. We don't have to pray. We don't have to go to church. We don't have to have any of these spiritual disciplines, and, and God's okay with us. Really, it's paramount to saying, I can live any way that I want to live, and at the end of the day, God's going to be fine with that. And I'm not sure that's what I read in the Word of God. And I think that's why some of our churches are trying so hard to, to discount the Word of God today, to push it further and further away. I will proclaim the holiness of the truth of God's Word to my dying breath. Verse 14 says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. You know, if you believe the word of God, live like you believe it. You know, live that out in tangible ways that I believe that, that God's word, you know, has everything that I need for life. You know, God's word has an answer to all, that pro all the problems and difficulties and heartaches and setbacks of life. And we need to live like we believe that and that we're not just on all the different waves of doubt and fear and, and riding those human emotions that drive the world. We're, we're not without an answer. We have an answer from a holy God. And even though this 
book is old by human perspective. It is new and alive and precise, and it's just the thing we need today. It's the right word for the world that we live in today. In 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 and 6, Paul writes, For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. You know, I'm convinced that there are going to be people who are going to make it to heaven by the skin of their teeth. Just the right time. They're going to surrender their, their life to the Lord and they're going to make an honest confession and receive Jesus as their Savior and seek forgiveness for their sin and acknowledge that they are sinners and that they desperately needed a Savior. And it's that God's time is never late. It's, it's always at the, the right time. You know, at the right time when the, the, the fulfillment was there, God sent his son into this sinful dark world to, to be born in humble estate in a manger, to grow, to be the God-man, fully man and fully God, and willingly went to the cross at Calvary and laid down his life. He lived, he died, he rose again, and even now he intercedes on our behalf at the right hand of the throne of God. And he's, he's really, he's cheering us on and he's speaking on our behalf to God. And I can imagine that conversation might go something like this. God, all right, you know Bob Shuey. He's a stubborn one. He has setbacks and heartaches and fears and frustrations. He does that for every one of you here today. Does that for every one of you. And that's why he loved you so much that at just the right time, his son came into the world. And he's a patient God. And he's slow to anger. And he's abounding in forgiveness. But one day, his son will return. You know, not as a little babe in a manger, but as victorious uh, lion of Judah. The victor. But all the enemies of God underfoot, a new heaven and a new earth, and a glorious future for all of us. Hebrews 4.15 says, this high priest of ours, he understands our weaknesses. He knows us. For he faced all of the same things we do, yet he did not sin. You know, he was fully human, but fully God, and being fully God, he did not sin would not and could not sin. But he knew what it was like to be tempted. He knew what it was like to be hungry and to be cold and to be fearful. He knew what it was like to be betrayed by people. He understands us. He was tempted in the wilderness by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I could survive 40 days and 40 nights of being tempted, although we're tempted every single day by Satan. Four minutes seems too long. But see, he, un he understands all that we go through. And he has compassion on us. That's why he laid his life down on the cross. He willingly set his life down. He died so that we could have victory over sin and death. He's the firstborn from the dead that we too who believe are born from the dead. And he finishes out this passage, he says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. A lot of people are afraid of God. And I think we should fear God, not, not in the sense that we're afraid of God, but that we have a reverence and awe and a, a, a deep love and respect for a holy God who, who gave his son. But we can, we can believe the word of God and we can come boldly to the throne of this gracious God and we can receive mercy. We can receive healing and hope and we can find the grace that we need to help us when we need it the most. You know, there are, there are, are times in my life where I, I greatly appreciate people coming alongside of me and, and helping me through a, a difficult situation. And, and there have been times in my life where it didn't matter how many people came around me, I was just in deep despair. And, and what I really needed the most was the Lord. And just cry out and, and with words I don't even know what to say, God, but you, you know me and I, I, I need you now. 
And in those critical, seminal moments of life, he was there, and he is there, and he's with us. And so, you know, we can, we can come to the throne of grace boldly, and we can pray, God, do for me what I can't do for myself. See, we, we don't have to do this in our, our own efforts and our own steam. So many people in the world today, they're trying to get right with God in their own efforts, but yet they still want to be the God of their own destiny. We need to let Christ be the God on the throne, and we need to, to trust him that he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us that he's indeed with us every step of the way. We can take God at his word and we can believe it even before we see it. We can trust that God's going to work it out. And one day in glory, we're going to open our eyes and in a glorified body where there's no more sin or sorrow or shame or suffering, no more death. We're going to realize that in those difficult, most difficult moments of life, that God was with us every step of the way. Just need to dig in deeper with him and to believe it and to, to live into the word and let the word live into us and through us. The world around us needs to know of this faith that we have, even if it's just a, a little bit of faith. It goes a long way in the hands of a holy God who can do uh, far more than we ever hoped for or imagined. He's still in the miracle business. He's still transforming lives today. Amen. <laughs> Let me pray with you. Father God, we thank you for your holy word. Speak to our hearts and minds and our very lives in Christ Jesus that we have a Savior that is interceding on our behalf and that you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. And so, Father, we surrender our lives to you today and we ask that you would work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. Purge from us, Father, all the things that hinder, all the sin that so easily entangles us that we might keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. It's in his precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to celebrate the Lord's table today. And uh, everyone is invited to uh, join us and any other to have at the altar. Uh, the usher will allow you to come forward. Uh, we will have options for you. If you want the communion cup, you can have the communion cup. It has the wafer and the juice in one cup. Or if you'd like the traditional bread and cup, you can receive that as well. So the choice is yours. Uh, you, when you come to the altar, you can just let me know, and uh, we can uh, make sure that you have the right elements. You know, this is a, a supper and a memorial that was instituted by our Savior. And uh, he puts before us the realization that his body was broken, that his blood was shed, that he willingly laid down his life. And so as we look back to the cross of Calvary and we see the depth of God's love for us and we realize that, and, and so it's a memorial, but you know what? He says that he's going to celebrate in heaven with us again one day. And so it is something that we look forward to as well. And so let me pray with you. With joy, we praise you, gracious God, for you created heaven and earth made us in your image, and kept covenant with us. Even when we fell into sin, we gave you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, our God, send your Holy Spirit so that this bread and cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we all, may we with all of your saints be united with Christ and remain faithful in hope and love. Gather the whole church, O Lord, into the glory of your kingdom. Glenn, if you could come forward, what I'd like to do is to uh, give Carol and uh, give Grant uh, communion first, and then we will celebrate communion as a, a congregation, if that's okay, since they're both working. I... Making it more fun. There it is. It doesn't go there. But I want to change everything. So
It's a long walk from upstairs. <laughs> we'll have to work this out and bring the elements up to you. So. I invite you to, to, to stand at the altar or kneel, whichever is comfortable for you. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, he gave this memorial of his sacrifice until he returns again. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was arrested, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat with gratitude in your hearts. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he returns. Drink with gratitude in your hearts. Okay, thank you. And I'll let you go ahead and, and lead the people up. Okay. Thank you. We'll celebrate together. We'll wait till everybody has the bread, and we'll all celebrate together. Likewise with the cup. Does anybody want the communion cups? Okay. If you would like to kneel, you can. If you want to stand, you can do that as well. The body of our Lord. The body of our Lord. The body of our Lord body of our Lord, the 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 body of our Lord. The simple piece of bread reminds us that Jesus is the bread of life. His body was broken. Eat with gratitude in your hearts. The blood of our Savior. 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 Blood of our Savior. Blood of our Savior. The 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 blood of our Savior. A simple cup of juice reminds us that our Savior's blood was shed, it was emptied out for the remission of sins, the sanctification of our souls. Drink with gratitude in your hearts.
Does anybody want these communion cups? Feel free to kneel if you'd like, or you can stand, whatever is easiest for you. The body of our Lord. 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 The body of our Lord body of our Lord. The body of our Lord was broken. He was beaten beyond recognition. He willingly did that as an act of great love for us. Eat with gratitude and thanksgiving in your heart. The blood of our Savior. The blood of our Savior. 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 The blood of our Savior. His blood was poured out unto the point of death, death on a cruel cross. His blood was shed for the remission of our sins and the sanctification of our souls. Drink with gratitude in your hearts. Does anybody want the communion cup? All right, if you'd like to kneel, you can. If you want to stand, that's fine too. The body of our Lord. 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 A piece of bread represents for us Jesus, who's the bread of life. His body was broken. Eat with gratitude in your hearts. The blood of our Savior. The blood of our Savior. The blood of our Savior. Savior. There's always one in there. Blood of our Savior. Blood of our Savior. The 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 blood of our Savior. You know, when I think about our Savior beaten to the point of almost dying, and blood being shed, that he did this willingly, his blood was shed for the remission of our souls and the, uh, or the remission of sin and sanctification of our souls. Drink with gratitude in your hearts.
Thank you. You may go back to your pews. anybody want the communion cups okay. you can kneel if you'd like to or you're free to stand whatever is appropriate for you the body of our Lord 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 body of our Lord broken that we might have life and life abundant eat with gratitude in your heart the blood of our Savior 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 the blood of our Savior. You know, he's just thinking as his life blood ran out and he died. His blood brought life for us, forgiveness of sins, sanctification of our souls. Drink with gratitude in your hearts. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that you have met all of our needs. We are mindful that your body and blood was broken and blood was shed. And you have given us all that is ours in Christ, the right to be children of God, and so we are. For this we give you praise. Amen. Our uh, closing hymn today is hymn number 688, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, 688. Please stand and join me. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, march beneath our tender care. Pleasant pastures feed us for our youth's eyeballs repair. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thy we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thy we are. Befriend us, be the garden of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, 
blessed Jesus, hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, O oh, hear us when to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and how to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor, early let us do Thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Amen. It was wonderful to worship with you today. Like I said, next week, uh, Phil and Sandy Leonard will be brought into membership, and the following week, service is at nine for our uh, rally day. May the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen and amen.